Okay, uh, for all you do-it-yourselfers out there, I'm going to go through a quick procedure on how to uh, charge up your system with R134 Freon. Uh, this truck takes a uh, Freon charge of two pounds. Okay, so and here are the cans here. They're 12 ounces. So uh, we've got three cans I'm going to put in. That's 36 ounces, which is equivalent to two pounds. Um, here, um, here's the line that I disconnected from the, after I vacuumed it. Uh, I put it here. Uh, prior to doing that, though, you want to shut off your your high pressure and your low pressure valves. You want to shut them off so that you can still maintain your vacuum because we're because uh, I disconnected um, you know my vacuum source. So you want to shut that off. Um, it, it's a fairly pr simple procedure. You know you'll you need to know how to you know use this uh, pop-on thing to to open up these cans. But anyway, you'll turn this screw and it'll puncture a hole in there and then you'll loosen it which will allow the uh, pressurized Freon to flow this way up the middle yellow and it's going to flow to the left and down you're going to charge only through your low side so that one of the most important things here is you want to make sure that your high pressure valve is completely off now when I start charging I will see pressure on here but nothing there nothing will be um, flowing uh, no Freon will be flowing through that line. It'll again, it'll, the Freon will flow up here and down into the low side. And again, I'm going to put three cans. Um, since this is a fully discharged system, actually with a vacuum on it, uh, one trick I learned from a fella I worked with years ago at IBM it, to in increase the pressure of uh, his name is Bob Ayers. Uh, he was one of my best friends back in Raleigh. Anyway, uh, uh, way to uh, discharge quicker is to get hot, hot tap water and fill up like a, a little bowl like this and then just take the can and just dip it in and out of the, uh, you know, dip it in and out of the hot water and that'll increase the pressure, increase the pressure of the can and push it harder through. Uh, again, I don't, I don't just leave it in there, I sort of just d dip it in for a few seconds, pull it out. And as you do that, you can monitor your low side you'll see when you put it in the hot water the pressure will will jump up you know at five or ten psi and then we pull it out it'll, it'll settle down but it, it's a way to get it in quicker and it's safe um, again it's hot tap water you don't boil it or anything just out of the out of the faucet so anyway uh, that's pretty much it make sure this guy is totally closed you don't want anything flowing through here this guy will be open for the low side because that's where the freon is going to go in the low side and and that's about it. And you know, uh, 